A lot has been happening in Burkina Faso lately. Mass protests have been taking place within the country. The democratically elected government had been removed through a coup, which was then followed by another coup, and recently the military ordered that French troops stationed within the country must be removed. As a result of the coups that have taken place, Burkina Faso has been suspended from the Economic Community of West African States and the African Union. In this video, I will be talking about the events leading up to the current situation within Burkina Faso and discuss the growing anti-France sentiment within the region and the possibility of the country's turn towards Russia to aid in its battle against terrorism. The problems currently facing Burkina Faso are similar to that of other countries within the West African Sahel region. Similar to other countries within the region, Burkina Faso has had to deal with the rise of terrorist organizations within their borders. Since 2015, Burkina Faso has been fighting against factions of the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. This has been an ongoing problem within the country, and Burkina Faso's military has struggled to contain the violence taking place within the country. So much so that the former American CIA political analyst, Michael Shurkin, described Burkina Faso's army as ill-equipped and unprepared for battle. As a result of the violence within Burkina Faso, more than one million of the country's inhabitants have been internally displaced, meaning that more than around 5% of Burkina Faso's population has been forced to pack up whatever they could and leave their homes behind as a result of the insurgency taking place within the country. The instability has taken its toll on Burkina Faso's economy as well. Consequently, Burkina Faso currently ranks 184th out of 191 countries in the 2021-2022 to Human Development Index Report of the United Nations Development Program, which places it below Yemen and above Mozambique. It has been reported that around 40% of Burkina Faso's population lives below the poverty line, with its economy mostly being based on agriculture and the export of gold mined within the country. Naturally, as a result of the instability within the country, the government has been faced with massive protests by the people of Burkina Faso, especially from younger Burkinabe. There have been protests against the insecurity within the country and the perception that the government had been too close to Burkina Faso's former colonial power, France. Anti-France sentiment is increasingly becoming more and more widespread within Burkina Faso, with many of the protesters claiming that the French government has been too involved in the internal affairs of the Burkinabe people. Burkina Faso is a member of La Francophonie and the official language of government and business within Burkina Faso is French. And the currency used within the country is the CFA franc, which is used in eight West African countries, which were all at one point colonies of France. However, one of the biggest issues at the heart of the protests is that France has had around 400 troops stationed within Burkina Faso since 2018, which had arrived at the request of the government in order to help in the fight against jihadists present within Burkina Faso. In fact, France has troops all over West Africa, within its former colonies, who have been tasked with fighting against terrorism within the region. However, as evidenced through the current situation in Burkina Faso, as well as in other West African nations, their mobilization has not exactly been successful. And for many Burkinabe, the idea of having French troops on their soil, troops from their former colonial power, is to put it simply, infuriating. Perhaps if the French had been more successful in their mission within the region, things may be different. However, since they have so far not been successful, the question of why exactly are they even there began popping up. The growing anger towards the government over insecurity in the country and the perceived closeness of the relationship between the government and France had led to a concerning political situation within Burkina Faso. Following the re-election of the president in the 2020 general election, Roche Kabore, the president, had been met with widespread protests and calls to resign within the country because of the insecurity crisis. In December of 2021, amid the chaos, the country's prime minister, Christophe Joseph Marie Dabire, had been removed from his position as prime minister amid the escalating insecurity crisis. The situation was tense. The people of Burkina Faso began to lose more and more faith in their government. As you can imagine with widespread protests, insecurity rocking the nation, and the increasingly unpopular government, which had been seen as being too friendly to the former colonial power, the situation was rife for a coup to take place. And that is exactly what happened. On the 23rd of January 2022, a coup d'etat had been launched within the Burkinabe capital, Ouagadougou. 
sounds of gunfire could be heard in front of the presidential residence and at various military barracks around the city. Everyone knew what was going on, though the government attempted to deny the fact that the coup was currently taking place. However, a few hours later it had been reported that the president had been placed under house arrest. And the following day, on the 24th of January, the military announced on television that Kabore had been deposed from his position as president. The coup had been led by officer Paul Henry Sandago Damiba. Following the announcement, the military declared that the constitution had been dissolved along with the government and the parliament. The coup had been met with some cheers and gatherings in solidarity with the coup leaders. However, it was met with horror by members of the economic community of West African states, who released a strong statement condemning the coup, stating that, quote, ECOWAS is following with great concern the evolution of the political and security situation in Burkina Faso. Characterized since Sunday 23rd January by an attempted coup d'etat, and they stated that the body condemns the extremely grave act, saying that the body holds the military responsible for the physical well-being of the president. This was especially concerning for ECOWAS because this was the third country within the bloc where a military coup had taken place. Prior to the coup in Burkina Faso, there had been a coup in Mali on the 24th of May 2021 and in Guinea on September the 5th 2021. And one of the fundamental principles of ECOWAS is a commitment to democratic rule within all member states. Therefore, the body simply cannot accept a coup d'etat taking place within not just one, but three member states within the course of less than a year. As a result, Burkina Faso joined Mali and Guinea, becoming the third country to be suspended by the body, and about a week after the coup, the country had been suspended by the African Union as well. The military, led by Damiba, had claimed that they would take the necessary steps needed to deal with the problems of jihadist terrorism within the country. However, many months had passed since the coup, and the situation did not get any better. In fact, you could argue it maybe even became worse under the military regime. The military had reportedly lost even more ground to the insurgent groups. It had been reported that by September of 2022, close to 40% of Burkina Faso's land was in control of non-state forces. The population became dissatisfied with the military junta, and many members within Burkina Faso's security forces began to become dissatisfied with Damiba. And as a result, on the 30th of September, Another coup took place within the country, this time led by Captain Ibrahim Traore, who was the head of a military unit based in northern Burkina Faso. ECOWAS's reaction to the second coup is that they maintained that Burkina Faso would remain suspended from community activities, and that the body would be sticking to the original 24-month transitional period for the restoration of constitutional order, which is scheduled to occur by mid-2024. One of the actions that has been taken by Ibrahim Traore that has made international headlines, which Damiba had refused to do when he was in power, is to order that all French forces stationed within Burkina Faso must leave the country. This has led to concerns, especially among Western nations, that Burkina Faso may be turning towards Russia in order to aid in their fight against terrorism. Similar actions have been taken in neighboring Mali. Following the pullout of French troops after nine years of deployment in Mali, Russian mercenaries belonging to the Wagner Group began moving into Mali and many predict similar actions may be taken within Burkina Faso. Many within the country are also fond of the idea of Russian troops entering Burkina Faso to aid in their fight against terrorism. However, at least for now, Traore has publicly claimed to be opposed to the idea of bringing in Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group into the country. After a meeting with Traore, Victoria Newland, a U.S. State Department official said, quote, he was unequivocal in saying that it is Burkina Faso who will defend the security within the nation, and they have no intention of inviting Wagner in. And they vehemently denied claims made by Ghana's president that they had already hired the Wagner Group and agreed to pay them with mining rights within the country. France has seen the number of French troops based within West Africa drop of around 5,000 troops to around 3,000 troops remaining today. This has come amid growing anti-France sentiment among its former colonies within West and Central Africa, with a growing number of citizens from its former colonies, especially younger Africans, increasingly harboring very negative views of France and any kind of intervention by France within their countries. France, at least at this moment, still has close relations with the governments within the Sahel, such as Senegal, Ivory Coast, Niger, and Chad. However, this almost certainly will be a very worrying trend that Paris will have to deal with in the coming years.